Hi everybody you're listening to the Khan Dan podcast by the You podcast team a bi-weekly podcast revisiting the movies of Aamir Khan, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan. Every show we pick a random year from three decades of collectively 300 films the Khans have done and let our listeners vote which movie we should talk about. So it's entirely up to you. Pick a team, make a vote, take us down nostalgia lane, punish us or make us reassess a movie we dismissed. We love the Khans, most of us sometimes. and we would love for you all to be part of our kanban because when it comes to the cons in bollywood nothing, nothing else, else really, really matters. matters hi amrita <laughs> hi tanvi i'm very sorry no, can i say something by the way just off the yeah. bat oh yeah sure i didn't actually pay attention to this movie <laughs> <laughs> me me i was trying really hard and i was like my i was telling flow the uh, who, you know my other podcast so i was like this uh-huh. movie is mind fuck man what the <laughs> hell i like i feel i'm getting dumber just watching it <laughs> uh, 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 can i add a confession i watched it at one and a half speed on youtube oh uh, <laughs> i couldn't take it I, there, there was a moment i was like there's still two hours to go i did not have time for this my life is way too precious <laughs> I swear I was telling her like there is no way I would have watched this movie and I I, I mean I just started podcasting as well so I didn't even know like all this world exists and I'm like I can't believe I'm doing this like what is happening right now So Tanvi you 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 run the excellent uh, movie wala podcast right maybe you want to tell us a bit about that Oh sure so um we just started uh this january and uh, it's just out of passion we both love talking about movies and i finally found somebody like flow and we know each other through blogging um and yeah so the movies we pick are something we enjoy or we watched <laughs> in our childhood and we only pick movies that we really want to talk about or there are a lot of uh, south asian people and americans who are just getting into bollywood and they're always asking us like oh which movie should we watch so we're like let's start talking about movies we like and why we like them and some of them are not that great but we still like them and you know we stand by them but <laughs> so yeah uh such a yeah. joy to watch the movies for a podcast that you want to watch i don't even remember that <laughs> thing again i was i was just thinking like like that's like the polar opposite of what we do <laughs> You guys are brave. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Tanvi, oh. thank you for joining us, and thank you for bearing with this movie, and thank you for stepping in for Sujoy, who's traveling. And uh, if people want to see what he's doing, they should go to his Instagram page because he makes excellent pictures. Um, and I've actually told him to start a special photo series. So people should, you know, bother him on Twitter <laughs> and ask him to do the photo series that I'm kind of talking about. Um, and, and it's And if you're on Twitter and you're engaging with Sujoy, then also throw a few galis his way because this is entirely because of him that we are watching Chandramukhi as well. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was his like he kind of saw that uh, this movie was winning and he kind of very nicely bowed out and I had to step in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you you know that guy that does the phadda first and then goes behind the crowd that was Sujoy basically. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah uh, his uh, ID is at 9e3k on Instagram too so please people follow him <laughs> and tell him to do the photo series that I'm talking about <laughs> You're just evil, Asim. I am, right? I am. Like, I, I feel <laughs> when the episode that I wasn't around, you didn't get enough. You didn't. You were too nice, and you guys uh, didn't put me, you know, in a in a bad zone. But obviously, I'm back, so that's what I'm going to do. And this is also incentive for you to never leave the podcast, <laughs> Amrita, because now you know what's going to happen if you ever not there. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So, but also Amrita, if this movie can't break us, then you know, ये बंधन तो ये बंधन तो ये. I know, man. Look, I'll say upfront, like uh, obviously you can tell right now off the bat that the three of us are not fans of this movie. <laughs> 
I'm hot. I have to say that there have been a few people on Twitter who've um, who've tagged us and who've talked about how Chandra Mukhi is one of their favorites, and I suspect it's because they saw it in their childhood or whatever. Yeah, and, and obviously we don't want to, you know, make fun of that. And a, a lot of people have fond memories about yeah. this movie. I can imagine, uh, uh, like rewatching it. I this was actually the first movie I pirated in my own living room. <laughs> it's just a weird. It's a weird. It's a weird uh, memory I had. It was the first time we had a, a video camera in the house. You know, like a camcorder. And I don't know why. I just figured out, hey, if I put this camcorder on the TV screen, I can actually record the movie and then rewatch the movie in my own bedroom. But <laughs> I don't know what the point of that was. But while I was watching that movie, the memory came up. So, okay. This, this was Chandramukhi for me. Right? That's my fond memory of Chandramukhi. <laughs> heights are same. Heights. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I just want, you know, like the heart wants what it wants and people have fond memories of weird movies for all kinds of reasons. Um, Asim here thinks Lucky No Time for Love is a good movie. I don't judge him for that. Yes, you do, Amrita. Yes, you do. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like if Chandramukhi is your favorite movie and you genuinely voted for this movie and now your um your feelings are hurt because we're going to be laughing about it and believe me we're going to be laughing about it because this movie is a piece of work yeah but um i just want you to know that we are not making fun of you it's nothing to do with you um and we there's nobody apart like you know tanvi sujoy who's not here but like all the people that you'll see on this podcast including asim and myself whatever we say we do love the movies and that's why we're all here. Yeah, yeah. So we, this year, uh, this episode, we're talking about, the, uh, we, we gave you the pick of 1993. You had eight movies to select from. So that was Chandramukhi, Hamherai Pyar Ke Bazigar, Dil Tera Aashik, Dar, Jagruti, King Uncle and Maya Mem Saab. Uh, it was a very, this is probably the closest poll we've ever run. And Dar actually uh, tied up today. But the cutoff point was Wednesday, and that's when Chandramukhi was still leading. So we obviously needed some time to watch the movie. But if we'd waited a few more days, Dar and Common Sense <laughs> might have actually won this poll. But I think... Chand- and let's not only blame Salman Khan fans, because we get blamed enough of enough stuff in the world. Uh, I think this is also residual. We miss, we miss Sri Devi. And also just the fact this is, this, the, there's two movies that you, you can really talk of, uh, there's the kind of an intersection between Sri Devi and the Khans and Salman Khan did two movies with Sri Devi. So this one and Chand Katukra, which came out next year. Uh, so in 1994. So I think there's some, uh, cause, uh, uh, Shah Rukh did Army with her, but that was just a special appearance, I would say. And, uh, Amir never starred with her. So this is kind of the only chance we have on the Khandan podcast to talk about Ch- uh, Sri Devi. So that's kind of cool, right? Guys, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess so. I was only focusing on Sri Devi in this movie anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to, I mean, it's hard to focus on anything else, right? <laughs> but Tanvi, we never, I mean, I want to just get your thoughts on Sri Devi. I mean, I, I'm assuming for everybody, she was very important. How, 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 what was she for you specifically? I, I remember, I think the first movie I ever watched of her was Sadma and I was very young and I remember being really traumatized by it and just really impressed by, you know, whatever she was doing. But I was very young back then and but I think the first movie I really really liked the first was Chandani and I've seen that movie over and over again there's something about that movie just her expressions and how innocent she is and I love romantic movies so that is one movie which just highlights Sri Devi for me a lot so yeah I think it's just you know I feel like she came in a decade where good movies weren't getting made So I was more excited to see what she's going to do now because I think the material now would justify her talent more. Mm. Uh, Unfortunately, she just had few movies where she could shine and a lot of other movies were just repetition of what she had done and they were just same thing over and over again. So I don't think she got the due in terms of material. But it goes a lot to say that she still made a mark with whatever, you know, she was getting. Yeah, yeah. I... uh... 
It, it, it's funny because I was kind of going through her career and the movies and I, I was trying to figure out when this movie came out in, you know, in the aspect of her career. And with Heroes, you can, I mean, this was Salman Khan's bad phase. This was, I mean, I've already explained my theory of the four phases of Salman Khan and someday I'll write a book about it. But this was the end of phase one where uh, Salman had kind of, you know, he'd come up with a bang with Mene Piarkia and he was pretty much at this point just surviving on likability. Um, and it, 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 his, his kind of career graph changed again with the, with the triple hit of Hamera, uh, Ham Aapke Hain Kaun, Karan Arjun and and uh, I would say pyar kiya to dar na kiya. But this was really kind of, he didn't give a shit anymore at this point. You know, like the, the idea that you cut your hair in the middle while you're shooting at least seven movies and he does not care about continuity just gives an idea about how much he did not care about his career at that point. Right. Uh, that, he that's actually a, just said that, uh, you yeah. know, the HD promotions that are going on. I'm sorry to cut you. No, no, please. Uh, the hitchki promotion like they are asking tumhare life ki ya career ki hitchki kya thi yeah and he says that it was that at till a long time i didn't care about my work yeah and that was the hitchki of my life because until recently i didn't care about my career yeah yeah and i think he still i mean he's he i think he just has that personality where he he just kind of switches off a, some certain times so but here i can it, this was definitely a phase where he did not give af you know yeah. um so but so this was where salman was at but how do you evaluate Sri Devi's career you know um because if it it, it seems that even Sri Devi and uh Madhuri They've done a ton of shitty movies, right? And it's not really affected their career necessarily, right? I, I, I mean, I've sat through a lot of bad Sri Devi movies. Yeah, but we don't remember. We don't remember her particularly for her shitty movies. It's always, you know, when you talk about Sri Devi, you always remember the Yash Chopra movies, or mm. you think of, uh, you know, um, Khuda Kawa. Shri- yeah, or Mr. India, or like you know her iconic performances because. Everybody understands that the movies that she acted in in the 80s were shit and like most of them anyway. And why that was because that was a horrible decade in, um, in Hindi cinema. And I've heard a lot of the millions talk about how her career in the Tamil industry was amazing. And it's true that she did have better material, um, in Tamil cinema, but those movies, like I've seen a couple of them and they're not like they don't hold up very well. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know, like in retrospect, like they're very misogynist and they're very, they belong to that particular time. And you can see that in the movies that were remade into Hindi, uh, in the, in the seventies and the eighties, you know, uh, they're very patriarchal. They're very misogynist. Um, the woman needs to be punished for having ambition or, um, for wanting things for herself or for sexual agency and all that kind of stuff. So it's true that she had like a greater scope, but that doesn't actually translate to good cinema necessarily in every case. So it does a, you know, I think if you, um, if you're from India and you've watched movies from that era, then you kind of understand that the material might, might have been subpar. But the thing is like, as you can see in terms of this very movie, She's a person who shines in even like the most terrible material. Like the performance that Salman is giving, poor thing, and uh, Sri Devi is giving, they're like on two different levels. And it's not even like she has anything to work with half the time. Like half the time, it's just, you know, look pretty, smile, twirl look shy like that's basically what she has to do but even in that you know like she's so good and she you know she's she is all those things she is pretty and she does have a beautiful smile and she does twirl very well and she's doing the best that she can and you understand that about her like there's never been a movie that you can see of Sri Devi's and you're like well yeah she just like half-assed it 
because yeah. there was definitely a moment in Sri Devi's career where you know uh, Madhuri came up, and I, I mean we don't want to pit actresses against each other, but I think that's what the industry and the time does, right? And there was de- a definite moment where the shine went from Sri Devi to Madhuri a little bit. I don't know. First of all, do you even agree with that, Tanvi and uh, uh, Amrita, or is that like a completely false statement that I'm kind of assuming? I think it did happen. I mean, growing up. Back then, I do remember they being pitted against each other a lot, and you had to kind of always pick who do you like, mm-hmm. Sri Devi or Madhuri Dixit. So you had to pick between them. So that is true. However, I think um, Sri Devi probably like at that time she had worked with directors like Rishikesh Mukherjee or uh, you know whoever were making a little different cinema back then. There were some, not many, but like you know how Rekha made Khub Surat or she did uh, some Gulzar films. Mm-hmm. So it kind of just gave her a little bit. validation that oh she can act as well and look pretty yeah however in uh, hindi cinema shri devi hasn't done much i think her saving grace was doing uh, khuda gawa and the yashraj films that kind of put her oh she did some nice glossy films where she could act as well but otherwise all the other films are like with jitendra and mithun and you know they all are really just bad films <laughs> I I like the emphasis that Tanvi is putting on Jitendra and Mithun, like Jitendra and Mithun. <laughs> it's just the memory that comes to mind when you think about those movies. Like exactly what you said, they're very like um, misogynist and sexist and all the horrible ists that you can add to that. <laughs> You know, I remember when uh, they were remaking Himatwala, and um, like, why was that even a thing? Like that sentence just came out of my mouth, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> But anyway, um, when they were doing that film, they um, I think they were talking to Sri Devi, and they were like, "You know, what do you feel about it and everything?" And she basically laughed, and she was like, "Yeah, it wasn't like great cinema, or whatever." And I remember, like Ekta Kapoor and Tushar Kapoor got really mad, and they were like, you know, how dare she talk like that about our dad's film? And I was just like, bitches, sit down. <laughs> like, like, what are you even pretending? Like it's some kind of classic. It is not. Yeah, because I'm I'm just looking at the movie she done she did in this period, and it was, uh, uh, I mean, after so 1994 she had uh, Chand ka Tukda, Ladla. Then Army in ninety six, Mister Bechara, Judai. So there's definitely, I mean, these are definitely not her greatest movies anymore, right? And then she pretty much went away um, until uh, English English, and then Mom came out. So this was definitely kind of the start of the end of her, you know, illustrious career, I would think. Um, because yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Ladla was, I think, it was a pretty big hit. Um, but all the rest, uh, yeah, I, I do think there was a, that was really the period where Madhuri was taking the biggest roles and the kind of you know taking over the Yashraj movies and stuff like that. So just to kind of place this movie where it is, um, but I, I want to first uh, talk. Uh, I want to do the pick of the next episode. By the way, um, I random ran it through the random year selector, um, and I got the year two thousand and three. So for next episode, people will be voting for 2003. Um, there's only three movies that came out of the Khans, and Amir did not have a release that year. So um, yeah, no Amir pick, unfortunately. Um, the three movies that you can vote for are going to be Tere Naam, Salman Khan's Tere Naam. <laughs> I fe- oh I'm already God. scared in my boots. <laughs> Kill me, but kill honestly, me, I me. really feel the Shah Rukh contingent needs to show up to vote uh, because we have Chalte Chalte and Kal Ho Na Ho. So I would happily watch either yeah, one of those movies. Yeah, yeah. So let, let's let's see how this goes. Tanvi, I hope you can vote for one of those three. What, what, which one would you want to vote for, uh, or have you done one of these up on your show already? Oh no, we haven't. And I think I would vote for Kal Ho Na Ho. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to divulge what I want to. What I, I want to watch. Uh, I yeah. Oh, oh God, Tere Naam, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just for that hairstyle. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Okay. So that's the vote for the next episode. But this this way this episode we're talking about Chandra Mukhi's like we've already started. Um, this was directed by a guy named Devaloy Day. Who made two movies? He made um, Chandramukhi. Then apparently he moved to Canada 
to v- sell television software <laughs> and then he came back <laughs> in 2014 to make a movie called Machli Jal Ki Rani Hai which is a movie starring Swara Bhaskar and it's a horror movie and since then he has no projects on the docket and uh, I mean I don't want to kick somebody whose career wasn't great but when i watch this movie i can understand why it might be a good idea to move to canada and start selling software wait but how did he get shri devi and sanman for his first movie that i do not understand i i i don't like i don't understand how in the 90s these movies got made like chand ka tukda which was immediately after which was actually written by the same guy it was written by this guy called anwar khan um who wrote a bunch of salman khan and govinda movies uh and then he also wrote uh, karan arjun and koila but he also wrote <laughs> madam x rekha's madam x Oh, wow. and, oh my god yeah and so he also wrote chand ka tukra which came out next year uh, which also starred salman khan and shri devi and for i think 50 minutes of chand ka T- chandra mukhi i wasn't sure if i was watching chand ka tukra or chandra mukhi i was like when is that <laughs> radha ko sham yaad aa gaya song when is that coming oh no that's the other one okay <laughs> so anyway oh. Remember that song? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is in Chandkar. That was in Chandkar took it, right? Yeah. I do remember that uh, you know, I watch a lot of interviews. That's just my thing. I do remember Salman Khan saying that this was his story idea and that he mm. gave it to Anwar Khan to like develop it because mm-hmm. he was really uh, and then I think I was like, but isn't this the story idea of Big, the uh, Tom Hanks Big, but they just yeah. totally screwed it up and made something else. So Salman <laughs> saw Big and he had the idea, should we make this in Hindi? That's the mm-hmm. idea, right? That's... <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. That's not how it happened. <laughs> Some guy in the Telugu industry saw the movie Big he made a Chiranjeevi movie <laughs> and then they remade it as Chandra Mukhi. Actually, I don't know. I need to check. <laughs> but there's a uh, this Chiranjeevi movie uh, made in Telugu that is the exact same uh, movie, and it is actually a really famous and really um, popular movie. So yeah, this came out in 1993, and the top hits were at that time Aankhe, Khalnayak, Dar, and Bazigar. So, so this was definitely the moment Shah Rukh took over, uh, and uh, yeah, I think Salman was just like just. taking it quite easy at that moment <laughs> like he did not care and uh, sharuk this was this was sharuk's year and sharuk's uh, ascent started for sure so i i'd like to just talk about dar for a quick minute but before i do i just want to say the movie that i'm talking about in telugu it's um, i don't know if i i don't speak telugu so i don't know if i'm pronouncing this correctly but it's called uh, jagade ka virudu adiloka sundari and it is a 1990 movie directed by K Raghavendra Rao who's like very famous and it starred Chiranjeevi and Shri Devi oh, so Shri Devi she's <laughs> that yeah <laughs> so um she probably you know she probably decided to do this movie because she was familiar with the source material and uh, it was very big hit in Telugu so she probably expected it to do really well in Hindi as well which uh, did not happen but that but, answers uh, my question which i was thinking throughout the watching the movie saying like, why is she devi doing this why is she yeah. doing this so now i know why mm, okay um can we talk about dal for a quick minute let's minutes? let's Because talk a bit about tie. yeah it did tie so it gives uh, it gives us at least 5 10 minutes to talk about that right <laughs> itna to hak banta hai itna to hak banta hai we're going to talk about an hour about chandramukhi give us 10 minutes about that right um tanvi did you like dar when it came out i did like dar when it came out yes was uh, sharuk like the anti hero but also like very sexy or something no actually i was never a sharuk khan fan until i watched ddlj so i don't think sharuk was the pulling factor i think it was just in general like a different story for back then and mm-hmm. i like the song and i like juhi javla i'm i, I kind of enjoy juhi javla's comic timing and her chirpiness i at least i did back then i don't have i haven't watched it again so i don't know if it will stand the test of time what about you asim i i mean i i love both bazigar and dar came out i um i think for 
for men from because I'm I'm obviously speaking for all men like I always do, right? Um, <laughs> it was it was kind of a troubling movie, right? Like I don't know, like re, even then I was thinking like, is this the kind of this is this the way women want their men to behave? And because I mean I was quite young at that time, so it was very confusing. And I think still a lot of men hate him for that. Like uh, there's still people at this time that don't understand that Shahrukh ko dekhe kuch kuch hota hai. You know, like ladkiyon ko dekhe kuch kuch hota hai. Like they don't get it. Like um, so obviously I love the songs and Dar was amazing. Um, I have not re- rewatched it in years though, so I don't know how much it would hold up, and especially. He didn't get the actresses in either of those movies, and he dies. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think the thing with Dar is that it's a very stereotypical story about um, you know like if you put say I don't know Prem Chopra in Shah Rukh's role you know it is exactly that story it is about this uh, guy and a girl who are in love and they're going to get married and then there, there's like this weird uh stalker like shakti kapoor who, type right um, more like more the shakti yeah. kapoor you need like because shakti kapoor would be wear these like tight leather jeans in hero and all that kind of stuff and be super rapey right <laughs> so this is like so this is basically a movie that we saw throughout the 80s right it was like the same movie like we saw all the time and then suddenly like shahrukh comes in and our sympathies are with him and i remember and it's even today they talk about this you know like when sunny um signed on for this film and when yash chopra was trying to cast the role that ultimately went to sharuk none of the heroes wanted to sign on to that film because they all thought you know uh, this is basically that movie that we've all seen in the 80s so that's why none of them wanted to sign on they couldn't understand how this character could be sympathetic so amir said no and like all the other people said no and then uh sunny signed on for his role because he thought he was going to be the hero <laughs> and he is the hero you know like technically speaking when you look at the movie he's the guy who's like you know he's a naval officer uh the girls in love with him he saves her he kills the bad guy he takes all the boxes for the hero but there is such a thing as a protagonist <laughs> which is a concept that i don't think any of the actors have actually thought about it and i'm not sure if even sharuk had thought about it i think sharuk basically just signed the first five films that came his way and one of them was dar and he was like yeah all right i will i'll stop a girl <laughs> and get stabbed in the stomach sure why not um and i think what happened with that movie is one that yash chopra is actually you know that's why experience comes into play you know like to be able to take a story that's been done a million times and then give a new perspective to the characters that are playing it and actually make the audience understand that perspective that is something that you know like that really shows what a good director he was i just wanted to add this i got this from imdb trivia i don't know if it's true but i just thought it was funny so i need to read this sunny deol did not like the way his role was shaping up in the movie he was furious but couldn't say much to yash chopra as he was a senior director he got so angry that he furiously put his hands in his pants pockets and started punching <laughs> due to this his pants <laughs> Due to this his pants were torn off. Four out of five oh people God. found this interesting. Shut up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> ah, the treasure trove of IMDb <laughs> trivia. So, I think we've avoided it a lot. Shall we talk a little bit about Chandramukhi now? <laughs> Sure. Unless we had something else about Dar to say, Juhi was awesome. Can I just add that? Like, I think a lot of times yeah. we we talk about you know Yash Chopra, um, Shah Rukh, and uh, Sunny a lot of times, but uh, Juhi is just amazing. You know, she's uh, um, because it, it. I mean, if you look at it, you know, we talk about you know Amir would have taken Shah Rukh's role or you know this and that, but. I I think Juhi's role only Juhi could have done it the way she did and she was a big part of 
why that movie was so successful. I mean, just those those songs, right? Mm-hmm. And even for her, it was kind of a, a different movie from what she'd done yet. And this was also her moment where she kind of, you know, became a contender because before that, she really wasn't to that extent. You know, it was always between uh, between uh, Sri Devi and Madhuri. And this was that moment where Jui kind of had a few years where she was also like at least, you know, a, a good second choice in a way. And uh, I, I love that period. Uh, it, it was fun. It, you know, she even got the chance to do movies like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kiladi. Uh, yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Kiladi, which I love. <laughs> Ask them why. Because <laughs> I like my samosas and my alus. Why, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Should have married Shalu. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of um, give a shout out to Jui Chawla. I do like your holy scene in a uh, holy song in Dal. Yeah. That's one of my favorite holy songs, which never get that much due. Yeah. They always pick out different holy songs. And I like Tanvi Azmi and Anupam Kher as very nice and supportive brother and sister-in-law. So, yeah. And That's also, that. like, the holy scene was actually, like, really smart, you know? Like, the idea that, you know, he can come in because everybody's got color on their faces. And he gets to be part of the song, you know? It, mm. I remember watching it, like, as a kid and thinking, like, oh, my God, that's right. <laughs> like, holy is one of the most unsafe times <laughs> to be a woman. And that was, like, the first time that I actually saw it, like, in a holy song in Bollywood. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's really clever. Um, my Twitter timeline has been talking, I don't know why, for the past couple of days, they've been talking about Shah Rukh and Juhi and about how how much they enjoy Shah Rukh and Juhi together and how um, some of his most exuberant but not in an annoying way like you know Shah Rukh has like two modes of exuberance like one mode is where he's like really charming and the other mode is that you just want to punch him in the face and with Juhi he was just very charming and he was in Yes Boss and Raju Bandia Gentleman and all those movies he was just so lovely and they were just so cute together and uh, yeah they just had something between each other like they, they weren't like Shah Rukh and Kajol but they were they were their own thing. And, probably, uh, probably because Jui didn't let that. him slap him all the time. You know, like Kajal <laughs> does. Kajal gets slapped all over the place by Shah Rukh. I don't know why that is. Even if you Google Shah Rukh and Kajal, like 50 p- pictures will be of Shah Rukh slapping her. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but they're like really, they're like even. Yeah. Like they're like on the same level somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Like with uh, Madhuri, he's always like, you know, he, he gives that uh, that look, you know, where it's like, oh, my God, can I touch her? Uh-huh. But with with Juhi, like, I absolutely believe that they're like two young kids who are like starting off yeah. their lives together and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they just, uh, I don't know, they just seem like such equals when they're on screen. Mm. I really like them together. Right. Yeah, no, no. Say, I like, I, I mean, I, honestly, I like Jui in anything. She's she's good. Even like when yeah. we were talking last week about Paheli, just the few minutes we had with her on screen, she was she was just so, such a lovely sight. Um, so yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about Chandramukhi. I think we've avoided very, very, quite a bit. Um, um, I mean, this movie is super weird, right? I mean, it is definitely an adaptation of. <laughs> Of ba- big to a certain degree, but it also has like a little bit of chalbas thrown in it in some way or the other, right? Uh, where where Salman is Sri Devi, <laughs> like, um, and he gets abused by his uh, evil step mom and his mama. By the way, this movie has all the villains, like all the villains like ever created in yeah. Bollywood movie except Amrish Puri and Pran are in this movie. I think, like and. You know, you have a... Pran is in this movie, just not as a villain. Where's Pran? I didn't see... Oh, sorry, not Pran. Uh, right, sorry. Uh, yeah, Pran, I, I went... Uh, Amrish Puri and uh, Prem Chopra. Sorry, I went Prem Chopra. Uh. <laughs> Asim was watching it like super close to you guys. <laughs> I was like, Shit, did I miss Prem Chopra somewhere in the background? Was he, was he playing Zola? <laughs> 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 so yeah, yeah. Pran is basically buying jungles in this movie. That's his whole idea. He, that's his whole business plan. He has a big office where he buys jungles for the slack. Is it ever explained why he's buying so many jungles? Like, what's the business plan here? 
I like if if there was a quiz on this movie, I would fail it because I just tuned out. Yeah. It was just like a bunch of you know like pictures that were moving on my screen, and I was just like, why? Why is this my life? Yeah. Like, that was basically how I saw this movie. So don't ask me questions. <laughs> don't talk to me about this movie. Basically. <laughs> Uh, I like how Asim started. It's like, oh, let's get back to the movie, and then the first sentence he says is like, "How weird is this movie?" <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. I I actually have something to say about this movie. Uh, <laughs> um, good, <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, it's something that I I always notice between like Hollywood movies and Bollywood movies, but especially in this film because it's such a good example of it in that. is really violent about how it treats its children yeah. you know like they're getting punched um, like straight like, up you know, punched in the stomach the kids here yeah like you know like you see things like like in hollywood what it's a terrible uh, movie about ch- about kids being abused would be something like you know like um uh i don't know but it could be something really bad like pastor out of Car- carolina but um it's usually something like you know uh the little princess or whatever where you know she needs to she's made a maid and then everybody's mean to her and says mean things whereas in bollywood it's that little girl that's getting blown up in mr india and then there's this kid who's just getting beaten up like straight up abused and it's just there like they're not trying to hide it they're not like panning away yeah. or anything he's just getting beaten the shit up yeah um and it's pretty extreme and i just yeah and i guess child abuse has been on my mind because um two days ago daisy rani came out and was talking about how she'd been raped as a 6 year old on a movie set oh, so that's just you know like on my on my mind oh, so yeah. yeah yeah it's uh, it's 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 it, and it's also just the way the casualness of how the violence is portrayed i think in like what you're saying in hollywood it's or they're they're mean or they're badly treated like you know oliver twist or harry potter or whoever else but there's no physical violence and or otherwise there's a movie where they go for you know child rape or child abduction but then it's yeah. not visualized right and this is kind of in the yeah. mid- middle where there's extreme violence and it's visualized and it doesn't seem to matter at all like clearly salman's um character or his child character is being abused for years and years and years but he has no no opportunity to even talk to his granddad about it who he seems to have a very good relationship he's just coming to school and he just visits visits the hospital uh, the office and he just talks to he has a very straight direct relation loving relationship with pran um but he has no way of telling that which is just again the weird thing about chandramukhi it does set the framework of what the story is about in the first 10 15 minutes it introduces the characters it tells you what happened he, you know like he, he he doesn't have parents and he's taking care of him and there is this sunehri shakti and this village which that part i did not understand what's going on i understood that it was kind of like a female krypton or like a timiskira from wonder woman something kind of thing i didn't understand if these women were angels or they were goddesses or they were aliens or what they were um and that part is never really explained but um i don't know i think the correct answer is all of the above yeah <laughs> but i think the one idea that i had about this movie was that the ambition far far outreaches the talent in this movie <laughs> like you know <laughs> <laughs> and the means that they had like you know like it's 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 like they had these grand ideas um about what they want to do but the the weird part is this came out in 1993 when mr india came out in 87 and in 87 they could do a lot more kind of you know showing invisible superpowers and uh, you know invisibility and superpowers and how kind of you know those superpowers are affecting people here in a movie made in 1993 with special effects so called special effects we still don't understand any of the mechanics of the things that are going on so that's why i'm saying that you know the ambition far far outreaches the talent and maybe some people involved should go and sell software you know like <laughs> You know he had a chat with his dad and his mom after he made this movie, right? They were like, "Beta, 
जरा बैठो जरा कमरे में आना जरा कनेडा जा बेटा कनेडा बाबा है तेरा कनेडा में जा दैट वाज प्रोबेबली लिटरली द कन्वर्सेशन आई फॉर सम रीजन थॉट लाइक द द काइंड ऑफ स्टोरी वाज बॉडी लाइन पेडोफाइल बिहेवियर फॉर मी लाइक हाउ श्री देवी आई मीन हाउ कैन यू in fact not only when he grows up even when he's a kid the way she's looking at him i'm like dude what's happening like you know when they meet in the jungle and she's just looking at him with such lustful eyes i'm like he is a child leave him alone <laughs> and then they go on to have a real i mean and of course they don't have any logic whatsoever because he's only grown up as a body but the mind is still the same but he automatically understands the whole uh, manga sutra kya hota hai and what is what and suddenly she really also understands the works of the earth because here she lands she doesn't even know how to tell her name and then two scenes later she's completely able to understand everything that goes around and happens so clearly the movie was not high on logic so after a point i completely stopped thinking about why is something happening because i was like okay let's just go through this and you know have something to talk about <laughs> and that's all yeah there's that horrible scene where you know like uh, salman wakes up and he's like salman and so he checks his his pants yeah oh yeah oh that God. that was clearly big right that was from big right they they just yeah they did that whole scene but it was just but i like at, but you know but he kind of op- like ahead. he checks it out and then he puts his pants back in and then he makes like a face to the camera and i don't know what ha- what did he see what happened <laughs> like did, did it grow or did it not grow like that's what i was wondering like <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, the people. The people. No, no. So go, go, go on, Amrita. No, I just wanted to agree with whatever you said. And, you know, like the pedophilia aspect of it was pretty large this time around. Like I was just watching it, and I was like, why? But, why did they think this was okay to make, and why did did they think it was okay for me to watch? Like, but it's it's weird <laughs> because they don't make a decision again, right? Or Sri Devi Spari is is a sexual being, or she's she you know she doesn't she doesn't care. She's not part of our world, so she would not care if she's having sex with a kid or she's making you know she. but then she's also very like embarrassed and like coquettish about oh, oh we can't do this you can't hold my hand so it's like you know what's happening here like where where what is she, you know what is she like ye kahan se aayi hai ye kaun hai ye bachcha kiska hai and i i love and you know the right of reference to aids in there like you yeah, know uh, the kids that ghat ka pani yeah like, Ha huh, ghat ka pani hai like, oh god how do they even come up with these dialogues like who did this yeah yeah it was all anwar khan it was all anwar khan <laughs> um and <laughs> i i also like in the transformation scene where she looks at a greek god statue and then she makes salman khan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's close enough, right? Like, this is how a Greek god statue looks like. So, man, I just, I just want to point out as somebody who's been to a lot of museums, a lot of those Greek statues have very, very tiny penises. That's what I'm saying. She, he got a Greek god penis. That's why he was like, ooh, not, not so happy. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new low for us as yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> This is what happens when Sujoy leaves. We end up talking about <laughs> penis sizes. <laughs> <laughs> But again, I mean basically he Salman's character, he has these little kids and they're like ding dong ki kasaming all over the movie. Oh my god. I knew this fucking ding dong bell was going to haunt me from the minute I heard it, right? Like who was this Anand Milan that made the movie the music or was it the music is by Anand Milan and Nikhil Vinay? Oh okay, who's Nikhil Vinay? Were they? They were also a pair they were a of thing? music singers. Okay, all right. I don't remember them. Yeah, but I knew that the, the like the you know every Hindi song has that one song where you know this is the one that's gonna be it that's gonna carry our movie. and anand milan just give up give up after ding dong bell ki kasam you know that's this is it this is uh, this is all we're going to put effort into this movie take the ding dong and go <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah the songs in this movie are terrible yeah. and yeah like there's just, nothing yeah there's everything in this movie is terrible there's nothing i don't have a one positive 
anecdote to share or something that stood out or nothing. like not even costume design uh, and wardrobe like they even wear shitty clothes in this movie like there's not even like like I don't know about you guys was there any costume that Shri Devi was wearing or anything that sh- Salman was doing that he said no, like she just had two no costumes in there the funniest part was where like grown up Salman needs clothes so he goes and he puts on clothes from the from the drying from the clothes line and then Gulshan Kumar comes out and goes like tumne mere kapde pehen liya i just had to laugh because the idea of Salman and Gulshan Grover's clothes <laughs> No, but it also it was funny because Gulshan Grover has a look, right? He's gone gone for this all white kind of look, but then he also has some like a casual look where he has a purple jacket. Like this is his old wardrobe, <laughs> and he just wore the damn purple jacket because it was getting washed. Like, uh, like I don't know if he prefers the purple jacket look or the white look, but he was definitely that's why he was pissed off because he couldn't change. Like he was just stuck. Now I have to wear this white sherwani and be villainous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh this movie is so bad. Can we talk about the villain ki toli a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's a lot of them, right? <laughs> like 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 but the best one is Munish Bhel though, right? <laughs> Munish Bhel plays Tony who's Ada Hindustani and Ada Englishani, but he's also Ada Mariachi. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh god. And then every like and then we also have okay he's not a he's not he's not a villain but there's also Aftar Gill <laughs> who's playing like he's just like a Chinese wizard. <laughs> and his name is Yakimo. <laughs> Yakimo. <laughs> So, in addition to, you know, the pedophilia and the child abuse, we also have racism, like... We do, we do. We have everything. We have everything. And we also have uh, Tinu Anand, who's playing Santana. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me take a moment. <laughs> Again, this uh, this is one of those moments where I don't understand Sri Devi's powers, but she the only power she seems to have is making grown ups kids and kids grown ups. Like because <laughs> Santana becomes like a kid or I don't know a disabled kid. I don't know what what she does to Santana, <laughs> but she does the opposite to Salman Khan. And then on Pran, it doesn't seem to work because he's also like. They're all kind of playing at that same level of whatever that is. Is it is it a child or is it retardation? We don't know because <laughs> the kids, Santana, Prahan, Salman are all on the same level, playing it all on the same way. So I don't I don't understand it again. It's it's Santala. Santala. <laughs> <laughs> because he says Santala kai jala. Ah right okay. I couldn't hear it because I was watching it two, at two times speed of the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had like written down some couple of these phrases, which like I was like, okay, what is happening? One was this Santala kai jhala, then ding dong ki kasam, and then at some point it was like Raja. Aja. Aja. That was a Salman ad lib. Hundred percent. This was Salman. Like, let me just do my thing here. <laughs> and then this jungle uh-huh. wali ladki they keep referring to her as a like, jungle wali ladki jungle wali ladki I'm like oh god and the the one of the female uh, what I think it was Kanika the one who plays this vamp character Lily yeah and then she yeah. always introduces herself hi I'm Lily <laughs> okay Lily <laughs> and she, I think Gulshan says पहले क्यों नहीं मिली <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So your poetic, there's, uh, there was a lot of rhyme. Yeah, in yeah. Movie. And they're like the villains are like full on Ayashi, right? You know, like, <laughs> when, like Ayashi, <laughs> kar rahe, you know, that word Ayashi. They're like full on in Ayashi, <laughs> yeah. movie, like, like dancing on pop music and, you know, just do Ayashi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> And one one, right, one line that I wrote down is when Salman becomes finally he becomes like a grown up and he's beating up this, this the villain Kitoli. He goes, "Main wo hi raja jiske bachpan mein, yani ke kal, tumne bahut mara tha. <laughs> <laughs> yani ke kal, tumne bahut mara tha." 
<laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Uh, but some positives. I, I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go uh, you have I, I did have a I positive because, because again, that. like I, this was Salman Khan's spinning kick era. I'm a huge fan of Salman's spinning kicks. Like there was a moment where he was quite fit and he had like, you know, he had this martial arts training that he did back in the day and he had one of the best spinning kicks in Bollywood. Like he does this thing that he just like goes backwards and lifts his leg quite high for a tiny guy he is. And it is just such an acrobatic sight. I swear to God, there's maybe only Akshay and Salman that did it really well and he does it in this era and I think it's an awesome view to see. <laughs> That's just like my one positive about this movie is Salman's spin kick. <laughs> No, I was just saying that you mean back when he could move. He had exactly. movement yeah. in his body. Exactly. Yeah. When, yeah. When he... That was basically that was basically what I was going to say as well, Tanvi. Oh, okay. uh, you know, like this was basically the era in which Salman was the pre-steroids. So he was, uh, you know, he didn't have the bulk. And he had like a really nice body. It was like, you know, it was that lean martial arts kind of body. Yeah. Um, that's quite hot. And then I don't know why. Like, I guess he just wanted like bigger muscles. I don't know. <laughs> Why do guys want bigger muscles, I think? Tell because us. of Salman Khan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this, it's his fault, basically. When he took off that shirt in oh, oh, Jane Jana, we were like, we can look like that? <laughs> like, this is what we're supposed to be? We're not, like, supposed to be Vinod Khanna? <laughs> like, you know, like, you guys have seen Kishatriya, right? It came out the same year. <laughs> like, uh, that was what we look, we were supposed to look like as males, and then Salman took his shirt off, and it rocked our world. Basically, you know, our our whole idea of what uh, a body should look like has changed. We were really into that uh, Sly Stallone, Arnold era, and Salman took that over, Sanjay took that over, you know, that very bulky kind of thing. And now it's much more in that lean mass, Varun Dhawan, Ranveer kind of thing. So the whole idea about how kids should work out has totally changed. But I think this is really the kind of look we were going for in our age was... Sir, Sylvester Stallone, Salman Khan, and whoever else copied that in that era. So I think that's the secret of why do guys want to work out and why we went for bulk in that time. <laughs> Talking about Sylvester Stallone's uh, Salman, did you see the thing where he, <laughs> where Stallone shouted out "Race Three and then uh, and was like, uh, "Oh, it stars like the biggest star in the world, Salman Khan," and the photo was Bobby Diol. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. But he's in it, right? Bobby Dill is in it. Yeah, he is yeah. in it. And I'm so happy for Bobby, actually. Like, he's been talking about a while about, like, how he doesn't have a career anymore and, like, how he really wants to work and all that kind of stuff. And he's really vulnerable and he, like, puts it out yeah. there, you know, yeah. that he wants to work and, like, nobody's hiring him. And I kind of really felt bad for him because he's not that bad. I mean, and I, I kind of feel it's cool of Salman to, you know, bring him back into this like because you know Salman had a call in this and he loves you know giving people a second chance or kind of putting them into the movie that's yeah. the entirety of J-Ho is all of these old actors giving another chance to get on screen so I think it's kind of cool because yeah. I do, don't think without um, Salman's blessing Bobby would have had that role so I, I do think it's kind of cool and I know he's quite close with Dharmendra and all that kind of stuff right Salman um, so it's cool and it's also weirdly a year where Abhi Deol Isha Deol and Bobby Deol are all coming back on screen Isha Deol is coming yeah, back yeah yeah I saw some teaser poster yeah. of a cake kind of thing that she's starring in and apparently it's got a good good script uh, from the Twitter um note that I read about it so yeah um, that's that's kind of cool and what's Abhay coming in I just saw the poster uh, I, I don't I don't I don't know the title of the movie um, but I'm actually really surprised that uh, you remember like a few years ago at the time Dostana came out and then Jhum Barabar Jhum yeah. um, Bobby was actually really good in those movies yeah. and he was like very likable in Jhum like he was probably my favorite part of Jhum Barabar Jhum like he really made me laugh and then in Dostana, he was, like, really good as that boyfriend character. And I actually thought he'd get, like, character roles like that afterwards. And then he never did. And I'm kind of surprised. Bobby, it's a lot of it, it's just timing. He was bad timing. His whole career was bad timing. Um, because he was never connected with kind of the new uh, post Dil Chata Hai kind of cinema. He was still very much kind of, you know, the era before. And I think he was just late and wrong at the wrong time. I don't know. So that Abhay movie's name is Nanu Ki Janu. 
Oh, God. And it's something on ghosts, and Patrilekha is the ghost. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, again, what happened to Abhideva? He was doing quite well, too, right? Like, he just kind of. Maybe it's a devil problem. I don't know. His was mostly like he was very picky. He wanted. He, he yeah, he's not somebody who gets along with people, apparently, and mm. has the uh, personality issues. Right. Like, he was for Vaz. You know, he was for Vaad version one for um for Sonam. Aisha, yeah. Yeah. And she and like, you know, he should have just like let her do the work. Like that's one of the things that Pavad did really well, you know. Like Sonam really did that PR promotion thing really well. Um and she's good at it. So Abhay should have just shut up and gotten out of the way, but then he had to be like, Oh, you know, like this is not cinema and I was just like, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you knew exactly what you were doing when you signed up for this like you what did you think you were going to do yeah um, anyway. it's, it's tough when you want to make those kind of small independent movies and they you know they come along every two three years maybe and there's less of them and they don't make money you know like he was in Shanghai and you know he, he, these other movies but I mean they, they might have critical acclaim but if you don't have the box office to you know you, you need to mix and match both of things have critical acclaim on the products you want like the one for them one for you kind of system it's probably the only way, way that you can you know have a sustainable career um, so I think that might have been one of the problems with Abhideva hmm. yeah so does this mean we are done talking Chandra I, I was I was just trying to bring us back in some way but the whole Abhideva discussion just bummed me out so much I don't want to <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about Santala anymore <laughs> Okay, can I ask, like, this is a question I had, um, because uh, we're near the climax of the movie, and this is where my religious cultural disconnect comes in, and I want to ask you this, because this is the second time this is happening, um, Salman is always, almost dead, because he's been fighting Zola um, for Suneri Shakti, which is a, a golden leaf, which this whole movie is kind of a MacGuffin that they forget about, and then they come back to at the end of the movie. Um, so, he's almost dead, and then Sri Devi starts dancing um, and she does this angry dancing, right, to get Salman back. And I remember this from many Piyarkiya. There was also some kind of angry, angry dancing in front of the temple, right? What, <laughs> what, what does the angry dancing mean? Because this is just not part of what I know. What, 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 what is it? Is it like, a, what, what is it? Like, why, why is she angry dancing? But- Amrita, you want to take that? <laughs> <laughs> How very kind of you, Tanvi. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a there's a there's a Hindi cinema trope about that, right? Like um, you go and you basically it's a kind of uh, yeah, what do you say? Like a vrat kind of a thing that you know, like um, and you are basically I can't remember in this movie. Yeah, so it's basic. It's usually done to like to Shivji, right? And then yeah. you basically dance, and then um, so he's the one who basically pays attention to dancing <laughs> like I don't, I don't know so yeah that's what I was wondering is are you dancing for your god and it pleases him and then he'll give you the 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 spear is that or like how yeah like, is that, like, that not not the spear like that's too that's specific. just this movie it doesn't always give the spear when you angry dance in a temple it's not like okay it's not standard <laughs> yeah. right okay it's not like a standard <laughs> like I really don't want to be disrespectful. I really don't. I just really don't understand it. So I'm, that's why I'm asking you guys. <laughs> I think it's a Tandav, Tandav dance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have very limited knowledge. So, but uh, it's a Tandav dance and it is done. First, I think Shivji himself had done it. And this was during the creation of the earth and I know that it has some significance in it, but, you know, I don't want to say something wrong. So, uh, and I think it is when you do the dance to Shivji, he kind of gets impressed and it is kind of like source of life or something to that effect. So, yeah, it's kind of done to impress him. Oh, okay. And it kind of, uh, it generates cycle of life right. or source of life or something on those lines. Ah. But this is not what happened in Mene Pyarkia with that pathetic <laughs> moonwalk sequence. So angry moonwalk doesn't work. It needs to be like an angry turn of kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. She, Shivji's more likely to like do the yeah. exact opposite. So Shiv, Shivji's not that. into like angry pop and locking. 
Like, <laughs> no. you won't, he, he's, he's not into angry crunch or whatever. He, that needs to be. Okay. Right. Uh, you never know, he might be, but it has to be done at least with like some amount of competence. Not that weird, <laughs> like pelvic thrust thing that Bhagichi was doing, like awkward you see, all around. Yeah. She literally danced like a stork all around that mandir in Menet Karkia. So, no, that doesn't count. But she, Devi can actually dance, so that's what basically this is happening. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was my one one yeah. question I had, and the other question is, how much do you hate that little shepherd boy? Uh, <laughs> ghost, 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 ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ghost. Did, did you notice like all of these people are like calling each other like they're calling her ghost, and then Monish Behar was calling Salman Khan kidnapper. Like they're literally just calling these people by what they think this person has done. Like, that's oh, probably, ghost. <laughs> yeah, that's probably because they forgot each other's character names. <laughs> so they were yeah, like, again, there's no middle ground, <laughs> or it's like just the character name Dost, or it's like damn Yakimo. It's like Santala and Yakimo, like, or they've gone totally creative, or they've not given any thought to it. Drugs are not a good thing, kids. You should not be <laughs> <laughs> smoking and drinking while you're writing scripts. <laughs> yeah. So this movie is very really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I, I think we're done with talking about Chandramukhi. I, I think I never want to talk about it again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, like, if any of you are super into Chandramukhi or remember it fondly, then um, our friend Beth, who was uh, who joined us a couple of uh, podcasts ago, um, she actually recent. She actually watched it for the first time. Uh, a few weeks ago, and she has written about it at the Cultural Gutter, and we'll put in a link when we um, when we post this. Okay, yeah, I, I had not checked it out, so I thought there was maybe a Twitter thread that I wanted to check out first. So, uh, and I do think, I mean, Sri Devi is lovely too. You know, she is the life of it. I mean, if the only reason you watch this movie is uh, is Sri Devi, I can understand that. Um, but there are just better Sri Devi movies to watch though, right? So yeah. that's the thing. So why spend your time? And the thing is, this movie is like two hours, 40 minutes, and it's still badly edited. And I was wondering like, how long was this movie supposed to be? Like if, if the 200, two hour, 40 minutes version is still badly edited and there's like entire scenes and motivations that are cut off. Uh, how, what what was just going on? Like, and funnily enough, also like a lot of the shots that they have of different characters is definitely uh, shot after the movie or out of sync or like extreme close-ups because people are not even in the same room together. Um, and a lot of it is, you know, Sri Devi just smile, Sri Devi move your eyes, Sri Devi do this, Sri Devi do that, and that's like at least uh, I think half of the movie was probably just shot in a studio with one camera set up on Sri Devi or Kanika, I think. <laughs> so I will say, like, if uh, a pretty Sri Devi doing, like, celestial stuff is your kink, then you should watch the Telugu original, the one with Chiranjeevi, because uh, the production values are incredibly superior, even though it was probably made on, like, a smaller budget and was made in Telugu and, like, three years before this movie came out. Mm. So you should go watch that. It's on YouTube. And um, that movie actually has some bonkers songs because all Chiranjeevi <laughs> movies have bonkers songs. And uh, they're actually a lot of fun. And um, even if you don't speak Telugu or if you don't really care for Chiranjeevi, you can actually watch the songs and they're good fun. Yeah. And also, like, Guru Dev came out that year. Gabura came out that year. Watch those. You know, those are much more yeah. fun. Ladla came out the next year, which was much more fun. And people, the uh, Radha Ko Sham song is not in this movie. The Chan Ka Tukra song <laughs> is not in this movie. Do not get it twisted. This is not Chan Ka Tukra. I should have said this at the start, but I'm repeating it now. <laughs> The other movie was written by Savan Kumar Tak, who he has like a collaboration with Salman, which is also a terrible movie. I'm not saying go watch that movie, but if if you just think that oh that was that movie, it's not. It's the other one. Just kind of clarifying that. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, Tanvi, any final thoughts on Chandra movie? <laughs> Oh, no, I think you said it well. Please watch some other movie. There are better Sidevi movies and better Salman Khan movies. I just say skip this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, uh, for next episode, we've picked out 
2003, which has no Amir Khan release, so it'll be Salman against Shah Rukh, and we really hope that the Shah Rukh contingent kind of shows up for once. Um, <laughs> we've got Tere Naam, Salman Khan's uh, big comeback movie at that time, uh, with terrible hair, um, and then Shah Rukh had Chalte Chalte and Kal Ho Na Ho, which uh, were pretty nice movies, I would love to rewatch those. Um, Tanvi, where can uh, people find you online, and tell uh, your podcast too, obviously. Um, I am at tanvi.com, literally T-A-N-V-I-I-D-O-T-C-O-M. And my podcast is Movie Wala Pod. We couldn't get the podcast. <laughs> for it, so it's just Movie Wala Pod. Yeah, I, I listened to the DDLJ uh, episode uh, before we recorded. It's lots of fun. And I love your the way you have your logo. Uh, because, yeah, I've been doing this whole redesign of the blog. So I've been very conscious of how everybody's logos and images look. I love how you have both of your pictures in that cinema screen. It's really cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and yeah, rate Tanvi's podcast, uh, Movie Wala podcast. I think for every podcaster, it's really cool to get ratings and, you know, get likes on iTunes. It really helps us. And do the same for us for Khandan Podcast. Um, Amrita, where can people find you online? Uh, on Twitter, as always, I'm at Amrita IQ. Right. And will you, will you be for the, will you be there for the next Khandan Podcast or has this movie broken you entirely? <laughs> <laughs> great so you've been listening to the khandan podcast um and my name is asim Bernie. you can follow us at khandan we've done a lot of migration stuff to audio boom so now all of our feeds are working um so subscribe to the new feeds i know we lost a few people but the podcast is amazing so you should subscribe and rate again um thanks everybody for listening and uh we hope to see you guys soon.